Hey everyone, it's Doc Chang, and I'm here today indoors for uh, this installment of my Backyard series, which is now me in the uh, Living Room series. Outside there's a lot of noise, um, seems to be a lot of police activity today, typical day in Venice. So uh, I've decided for sound quality to do this one inside. Now today I wanted to go over the hard style lock. Now the hard style lock is, is a, a series of five points in the body that you're trying to engage. Um, in order to create more stability, more stiffness under load. Um, this is actually a coordination exercise. A lot of times people think that stiffness or tension exercises are just brute strength. And really, um, if you respect brute strength enough, you understand that brute strength is also uh, very um, indebted to coordination. If you can coordinate the contraction of certain muscles at the same time, you create greater strength. So to go over the five points of the hard style lock, um, there are five points of the body that you're trying to create tension in or awareness in while under load. Um, whether that load is your own body uh, when you're working on a, uh, let's say, like a plank or a standing plank or with load, such as with a deadlift or with a swing, at the top of a press, at the top of a get-up, at the top of a snatch, whatever it is that you're trying to do to create that systemic stability from the shoulders or the neck down, that's what you're trying to create the hard style plank for. Um, it is a feed forward tension drill, so it's not something you want to be doing all the time. Uh, don't mistake this as one of those exercises when I say do this exercise and this is how you do the exercise, that you need to do it 24-7. It's clearly not. Okay, so we're going to start from the feet, and that's why I'm barefooted today, um, not because I'm one of those um, overly traditional types that takes my shoes off every time indoors. So I want your toes up in the air. So as your toes are clearly up in the air, you can't favor your forefoot as much. When your heels are more firmly planted on the ground, that's the first part of the hard style lock. So the heels are down. You really have that feeling of driving the heels down through the floor or through the mat or through the carpet, whatever it is. The second point is to lock the knees out. The knees have to be locked up firmly and completely. Almost as if you're feeling like you're trying to cramp your lower quad. Or um, one of the other cues that's used commonly is to pull the kneecaps upward. So have that feeling of locking out the knees in such a way where you're pulling them upward. And you feel that tension throughout the quad. Heels, one. Knees, two. Third, and probably the most important to do, is engage the glutes. Now, uh, it's also one of the places that in the human body, in modern society, we've lost the most touch with. We have the least amount of awareness there, and for a place of the body that's pretty much the keystone of the human body, which allows us to translate the strength of our legs into the rotational power of the spine and out into the hands, um, it's tragic. And you see a lot of injuries that result because of that lack of ability to recruit the glutes at the right time. So this is the cue that I'm going to give you, which is a tactile cue. Um, it's a little bit... Uh, easier to get that kind of maximum contraction of the glute. So your heels are down, your knees are locked, but now take your fist and put it right at your sacrum. Now the sacrum is that triangle of bone just underneath your belt line. So put your fist right on your sacrum, let the fingers hang down. Um, don't tilt the wrist inward, just let the fingers hang down naturally. So your heels are down, your knees are locked, and then you engage the glutes on that locked knee in such a way where you actually <clears throat> bite the finger with the glutes. If your glutes are engaging well, you'll be able to feel like both of your glutes, both of the cheeks, are actually giving inward tension into the finger. Now, that kind of tactile feedback is crucial because a lot of times we think we're engaging the glutes, but we're not. We think we're doing something, but we're not. So whether that's uh, based in motion or something social, it's very important to get a feedback mechanism so you have an idea really of what you're doing uh, versus what you think you're doing. So again, these first three points, and probably the most crucial points are again, drive the heels down, lock the knees out, and engage the glutes. Now, ideally for a ballistic, such as a swing, those, all three of those are going to happen at the same time. You've got like a backwards thing, uh, a backwards tool that you're working on to just get you to hinge back, whether this is a wall, in my case I'm using a piano, pop forward, again, driving the heels down, lock the knees, and engage the glutes. Now notice, on a locked knee, the glute will posteriorly tilt the pelvis. Now, in posteriorly tilting the pelvis, if I don't keep that engagement, that lock in the knee, what happens? I'm going to unlock my knee to try and get that pelvis to rotate. 
You really want to make sure that coordination-wise, heels down, knees locked, and pelvis tilted because of the glute, not just pelvis tilted in a soft way. You really want that pelvis to tilt as a result of the glute. The fourth and fifth are, are secondary. Those are the abs are engaged. You're shortening the distance between the ASIS, or the top of the, the front part of the pelvis, and the low ribs. Without doing this with your neck, you're not chicken necking. The neck stays tall, the chest stays spread. So the heels are down, knees are locked, glutes are engaged, abs are shortened, and then the lats are on, which is the fifth one. When the lats are on, the chest is spread, and the, ch and the lats are a secondary spinal extensor. It's a very important point to remember because if you're not spreading the lats and your shoulders are up, you're really engaging more of the neck than your midsection. You want the neck to be out of the lift. You want this to be open. So I'm not telling you that you necessarily have to pack in a, in a very um, intense fashion, but let the neck stack itself naturally. And in doing so, you're going to make sure that you spread the chest, and in spreading the chest, creating space in the front part of the chest, you drive the shoulder blades down, which then engages the lats. So again, five points of the hard cell lock, heels, knees, glutes, abs, and lats. Okay? Give that a try. Work on that with your deadlift first. Try adding that into your standing plank, and as well as your uh, prone plank. Uh, and then uh, add that into your swings and deadlifts as well. Let me know how that goes, and talk to you soon.